Well, we're here again for part two to talk to Milburn Decker, to his family, and uh, eventually descendants on what was life like in his 87 years of life. And we talked uh, in the beginning about a lot of different things, but there are a few things we didn't talk about that we want to talk about. And I'm going to test your memory right oh, off no. the bat. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You've got 11. There were 11 children. There were 11 of us. Can you name them in order from oldest to youngest? From the oldest to the youngest. From the oldest to the youngest. Cosby Edward was right. the oldest. Okay. He, you, want the, you want the date? <laughs> if, you, if you know it, give it to me. If you don't, we'll move on. I, I can tell you, he born 15. All right. And Ernest Velvet. Mm -hmm. And he born 17. Yep. Auburn Ellis. Mm -hmm. He born in 18. All right. And then you got Wilma. That was my first, that was my sister. And she born in 20. Wilma Irene. She died in 39. And um, that was the first one to die. Yeah. She died in 39 of diabetes. Mm -hmm. And then after her, you got Roxy. Roxy Ann. And, um, and then Marvin Hugh, he born in 25. Right. Roxy was born in 23 and Marvin 25. And Dorsey was born in uh, 27. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob was born in 30, 1930, Bob O.U.A. And Roosevelt was born in 30, Roosevelt, James Roosevelt was born in 33. Milburn Decker, I don't know. I don't know when I. <laughs> 1935. 1935. And, and my sister, my youngest sister, was born in 38. That's pretty good. <laughs> so you had uh, four: Cosby, Ernest, Osborne, and uh, Wilma, and Roxy. Really, that would be about 100 years or older. Yes. If they mm -hmm. were living. Today. Yeah, uh, Rock should have been a hundred years old next year. She born twenty three. So I, I see Cosby had thirteen children. Yeah. So how many total nieces and nephews would you have? I have no, no idea. idea. I could almost go down here. Um, right, let's 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 see. Well, at one time, Lynn counted up her first hug. She had fifty six. So I guess that was my nieces and nephews at one time. Okay. That's a that's a big family reunion when you used to have them. Yeah. That's um, okay. That's a, that was a big family to raise on a poor uh, bridge farm. Yeah. So so eleven children. So when you were born, yes. How many were were living here with you? Every one of them down to Alma. Every one of them down to Alma. She was she wasn't born, so the rest of them was at home. So Cosby was here at home as well. Uh, now I don't know whether they lived here, but they hadn't married or nothing. It's in and out like a lot of people, because Cosby got married. I was a year and eleven months old when Cosby got married, so he was here for almost two years after I'd married. I mean, after I'd born. So we talked the last time about the, the the home that you were in sits on this ground, but it's not this home. It was a very small home. How many rooms did it have? And three rooms. Three rooms, 11 children, and mom and dad. Yes. Where did you all sleep when you were uh, here? Most of them were in the barn, I think. <laughs> no, no they, uh, they had bed. Uh, I think they had, and of course, back then, Three rooms is a normal house. Believe it or not, that was a normal mm -hmm. house for everybody. And a lot of people raised their big family with two rooms. Mm -hmm. This started out with two rooms for the first three or four kids, had two rooms. And then they built another room. Well, that was standard. That was a big house, really, for three rooms. And But, uh, of course, the rooms are big. It's a 20 by 20 room, that's almost four rooms. For uh, present house, see. So back then, if you outgrew your home, instead of buying a new home, you would build a new room. Yeah. Right. For the most part. Yeah. Wow. Well, and uh, but uh, uh, you asked for the slab in the living room. 
Of course, there wasn't no such thing in the living room back then, but in the big room, uh, there was four or five beds. In the other room, there was uh, two or three beds. And then in the kitchen, that's where my dad slept in the kitchen on a half bed. Your dad slept in the kitchen? He slept in the kitchen. And then he got up in the morning, built the fire in the winter time, and had everything ready. Yeah. We were talking earlier today, coffee. Yeah. Uh, today, if you want coffee, people go out to McDonald's and they get it fresh. But but there was always a pot of coffee on the stove, right? Yeah, up or, up or nothing. Up until noon. Yeah, didn't drink it afternoon. They did. Was they that common? Drink most, it. They most didn't people, drink it afternoon. Most people didn't drink coffee afternoon. Mm, it no. was a morning. Yes, a morning. Okay. And uh, it didn't make a big pot. And if it run out, that was it, you know. And but uh, by noon, it was all gone. Mm -hmm. But no one went around with a cup of coffee like they do now. They drank it. It's a. Uh, they drank all they wanted at breakfast. But then that was it. See. And you also told me that, half half kiddingly, but you were trying to make a point that with all the kids, it was almost like you were being raised as animals because you went out and kind of did everything on your own. Yeah. Brought food back or whatever it may be. Yes. Uh, tell the story that you told me today of fishing in the pond and then taking the fish up to a grocery store or somebody who would pay you to clean it? Play yeah, it, give yeah it to I'd, I'd catch fish and I'd catch a milk truck and it rode on the back. And of course, you didn't get to ride them. It's an open truck. And I'd ride up at that grocery store and there was a good spring there. And I'd clean the fish and wash and fillet them. And then I'd take them in the store and sell them to him. And, and the grocery store was how far from your home? It was at Nancy, so or at Bernetti. So miles. So yeah. that what is that about twelve miles? That, that would have been probably twelve, fifteen miles. Yeah. yeah. So you 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 caught the milk truck. Yes. From here. Yes. Well, uh, he come up to mm -hmm. a mile up the road. Mm -hmm. He picked up the milk in a mile, and, and he dropped you off at your fishing hole. Uh, he dropped me off at the store. At the store. Yeah, I caught him out. The, you caught him around here. Yeah, okay. I caught him around here, and I'd go a lot down, go early in the morning, say, and be back by the time he left. And he didn't leave real early because he waited for everybody milk before he took <laughs> off. So. Waited, waited till they got their milking done. Yeah, you don't <laughs> yeah. hear that today. No, no, <laughs> he'd put it in a tank today, but yeah. then they milked and put it in a can. And set it outside the road, yeah. and the milk truck picked it up and took it. It's grade B milk. It wasn't grade A milk. It's grade B. They homogenized it. I mean, they evaporated it or something. And I went with them, and they dropped it off in uh, Carnation. That's the one that had the milk plant at Somerset. And believe it or not, they put all went in them one vat. They did not check that milk. They smelled of it. Mm -hmm. And and they dump it in there. And if there's cockroaches, and they was, in the tank, they just pour the milk in on top of them, and the cockroaches just blowed up. But now, did, you, did you ever know of anybody who died from drinking the milk? No. No, no they, they evaporated, and so it was purified. Just and, everything went in. Yeah. As was. Yeah. And who knows how filthy the milk was. Right. As long as it wasn't spoiled, it, was, it passed. Did you drink milk? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I drank from a cow. Yep. Well, well no. Yep. You didn't go to the store and buy it. Yeah. And, and how, how well did they pay you for the fish? I think it's probably a quarter a pound, 30 cents a pound or so. It wasn't much. Maybe it wasn't even over a dime. I don't know. I don't remember. Did other kids do that too, or is that something that you found it's just that they would pay you I for? made a deal with him, you know. How we old? traded there a lot, and he noticed everybody. How, you know. how old were you at the time? So, probably 13, 14, something like that. There's a, there's a picture. I might have been a little older. 
there's a picture of you when you were younger than that. You were hair as white as can be yes. with your favorite dog. Yes. About how old were you then? Probably six or seven. So that was right around the time of the war, probably 41, 42, right? Yeah. What was the name of your dog? That probably, and I'd say around six or seven because it's more than I know, Polly, and that was my sister in law, Osborne's wife. Had a camera, had an old box camera. And she took her pictures because mm -hmm. he bought it, and of course, he bought it in the PX for you know, it didn't go probably a quarter. But, uh, uh, and I'd say that's where that came from. Now, that's what, two foot? I don't know how they enlarged it. I, I don't know how they done it. Yeah. And don't know who done it. Probably later. They enlarged it probably later. Right. But you try to enlarge the picture now and see yeah. what you get. You just get fuzz. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but that was, uh, uh, it didn't, but uh, one thing, now I don't know where my brother's, I reckon Cosby stayed here, but Ernest uh, was in Illinois. He went to Illinois. And um, after I was born, of course, he went up there and 37, I think. Came back in 39. Well, they killed the guy and they sent him to prison. Mm -hmm. And Cosby got married. Osborne went in the service. Mm -hmm. Roxy uh, went and babysitted someplace. And she went to Texas and, uh, back in 41 or 42. And, and then she went to Indiana to babysit. So they weren't all, we was all here at times, you know. But, uh, and, but not know, for I'd long. say on the weekend, there's everybody here. Mm -hmm. And was your mom a patient woman? Was your mom a patient woman? I reckon she was. I don't know how she stood it. Yeah. But I've often wondered. Now, uh, mom dipped snuff. And um, when she got her teeth all full, she couldn't dip snuff, so she chewed. I mean, that wasn't nothing uncommon. A lot yeah. of women did, you know. And she smoked too. Well, Dad did not use tobacco. Never did. Never did. He said Among he tried all these it, tobacco farms. He he tried it one time. He said and then I killed him. He never did take another draw of a cigarette or chew. Yeah. And but he raised seven boys and every one of them smoked. Yeah. But everybody did back then. Right? Everybody yeah. did. And two or three of the girls smoked. And I mean, it, you, you lived on it, you know, and mom smoked. I don't know how my dad stood to them. Not, mm -hmm. In the house. In the house, yeah. 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 And he could tell it would slip and smoke. He didn't allow us to smoke till we was grown or left home, you know. We, but we'd slip and smoke. He could smell it. Yeah. And so we got a whipping for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At what age? Well, I don't know. I started smoking. This is the thing. I had a brother that was 10 years older than me, Marvin. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he was 16 when I started school. Well, he smoked. And if his hands are dirty or something wet or dirty, he'd say, roll me a cigarette. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I was just a kid, so I'd roll him a cigarette. And he'd say, well, go ahead and light it. Mm -hmm. So I, I lighted it, and I'd get to smoke a little off of it. So that's what started. Yeah. And as far as I know, I've been out of smoke for 40 or 50 years after that. Yeah. Were your parents both church going people? Uh, mom or dad. Uh, dad at one time, and then he gave up the church, and then then he, later in life, he started going back to church. Was, again. was that pretty common that the, that the female would, would go to church? Yes. And the, and the, yes. And the, parent or the father would stay back? The father would stay in the yard a lot of the time. They'd take the women and the children, the father would take the women and children to church. Then they stayed outside and, and either drank or gambled or whatever till the church is over with. Right. Then they bring them back home. Mm -hmm. They made, they, most of them made sure the children went to church. Even if they didn't go, even if none of the parents went, the kids had to go to church. And the school teachers, we'd have revivals. And of course, your church don't don't have the revivals, but um, the 
the teacher would close the school and march every one of us to church on day. We had day service during the revival. Had day service and night service both. So of a day, the teacher would close the school and march 30 kids to church. And, and rain of course, or, I was going... Rain, I was rain going, or shine? Rain or shine? Yeah, as far as I know, you know, it was in the fall, so most time there's never no rain. And they know when to pick it, but uh, I've come out of it three miles to school, and we'd march all the way up here and, and uh, have service, and then then march us back. Yeah. Uh, we talked about your your schoolhouse a little bit the last time, but let's talk a little bit more about that. So, what at what time did you have to get up? To get ready for school and do whatever chores. Did you have any chores uh, in the morning before Dad, school? Dad rolled us out at daylight. Daylight. Whether we'd done anything or not. If it was raining or snowing, you still got up. Mm -hmm. it, he didn't allow you to lay in the bed. It didn't. If you're sick, you could lay in the bed. But that was it. Was there breakfast waiting for you when you got up? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Um, but most time it was. That's a lot of mouths to feed at one time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes mom would have it ready when, mm -hmm. and dad would call you one time. Yeah. And that's most of the parents done the same thing from what I get. Then if you didn't get up, I, me and my two brothers, Bob and Roosevelt, he brought the belt in there and started whipping us. Well, after a while, you'd, when he hollered, you'd get yeah. up. You know. You trained, right? Yeah. And <laughs> Well, did you have to do any chores before before school? Yeah, um, you. If if it was wash day, my wash on them. There wasn't no electricity, so she had to wash with a washboard, what they call them. Yeah, and no scrub board they called them, and and you had to get the water in and and build a fire and heat the water and everything, and you had to milk, you had to feed it, the stock. You had to uh, feed the animals, whatever you had, you know. Yeah, you're busy, and they let you leave at 7 o'clock to go to school. And that was sun time. It done way up in the day at sun time, you know. And uh, so uh, that when the school took up at 8 o'clock, and that's when they ate uh, uh, 4. So you had an hour to get to school. And what was the distance again that you had to walk to school? Three, about three. They always said it was three miles down there. And the last year I went up here to the on, on the next, and it was a mile and a half. But we never, when we went to school, until they closed that one school, we always went down there. Everybody did. And we were also talking today about a spider web that we saw out in the yard and and you said that wasn't because you had to go through the woods and everything that you had a stick, basically, that you held in front of you so yeah, that had you to, wouldn't go yeah, through we those. Yeah, took a limb. A and limb, I yeah. had to keep from the spiders of being in your face. Mm -hmm. If you didn't, you'd be eating spiders on the way down. Somebody learned the hard way, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, so when you get to school, you said it was a one-room schoolhouse. One-room schoolhouse. For how many grades? Eight grades. One teacher? One teacher. Tell me how the teacher worked that with the education of all the different grades. Uh, well, you, you started out with a six-year-old. You had to be six years old to go. So you started out in the first grade, and then you had the first through the eighth. And uh, when the first grade, when she took up the morning, she said to uh, primer or first grade, whatever they called it, come up front. So we had a bench up front that hold the, the class, and you everybody went up front, and that's where the teacher taught you. The rest of the kids uh, sat back there and studied while you uh, while she's a teacher now. And the eighth grader was the last one, and most of the time they let the little ones out the first and second grade. They let them out on and reset to play, so they got to go out and play. What would they have What would you have played back then at recess? What what we play? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, um, or a town ball. They call it one baseball mm -hmm. because we had different rules, so they just called it town ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
it basically like baseball, but there wasn't no rules or nothing like that. And then we had what they call base or stink base. It was a game we played. It. And the teacher played with us more. Some of them did. They played just like the kid did. You know. did, did you have a pretty good uh, area to play in outside? Our school ground down in the uh, where I started and went seven years. I'd say it was the playground itself was probably three or four acres. Three or four acres? Yeah. Okay. And it was all grass. Mm -hmm. And of course, where, you had, where we played ball, mm -hmm. the bases were wore out, the grasses wore out. And they had basketball goals, but we didn't have the money to buy basketball, so we never did. Yeah. We never did play basketball. And how many teachers did you have during your education? Just the one? No, uh, you mean during eight years? Yeah. Oh, I had, I think probably six or eight. Six or eight, so almost one every year, yeah. different one every year. Uh, my cousin helped two years. She helped for two years. She closed the school down for two years, and the re and some of them had worked uh, two months, mm -hmm. six months, and just quit. Yeah, they uh, they never finished the school yeah. year. I have had three teachers in one year. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> did they did they have to be educated back then to be a teacher, or was it somebody who who wanted to do it? Um, it. If you had a high school education, you could teach, but then you had to go to a college that fall, or they wouldn't let you teach no more. Oh, okay. You could teach the first, uh, the summer, you know, and, but you could teach the first year with high school education, but then if, if you taught any more, you had to go to college. Mm -hmm. And that was over Richmond or Berea. You, you also told me that when you got a little older, they entrusted you to go to school early yes. to put a fire, get a fire going. The, right? You went in to build a fire in the winter time. And this was, you you, you unlocked, did you have a key to the school uh, building? It wasn't even locked. never was? No. But you were there before the teacher or anybody else? Yeah, yeah it's uh, it, it just me. I'd go down there early and the teacher would come. Most times she'd get there before the kids, all the kids got there, but sometimes she wouldn't. If the kids had left home early, they'd, they'd get there. But um, I'd have, in the wintertime, I'd have the fire going. And the old room wasn't, cold, uh, wasn't hot, even that. And I have seen them, they'd have, uh, when they had the class, they'd bring them back to the stove instead of setting up in front and, uh, with a teacher. They'd, they'd move them back to the stove because it was a cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, um, I mean, I would imagine back then there were probably some schoolhouses that burned down <laughs> just because, you know, it was just a, probably a wooden structure. Most of them, weren't they? Well, I never did your school burn. Yeah. Never did. Wow. Um, when uh, they got the consolidating them out on the lights and then uh, there wasn't no children going maybe three or four so they sent them to another school mm -hmm. uh, you couldn't pick the school if you wanted you had they told you where you wanted to go okay. i mean they told you where you could go and where you couldn't the county did okay. and, um you said you had worked on your lessons when the teacher was teaching other grades yes. uh -huh. So when you did you have much homework? Did you have homework every night, or did you get it done there at um, school? Mostly, it, uh, no. We had homework. You had to do. Oh, I brought a lot of math home mm -hmm. and uh, English, you know, and your of course your readers and science and stuff like that, where there wasn't no work. But you had you had homework. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite subject? I guess reading was. Yeah. And the East, uh, I hated. Uh, English. I'm still no good at English because I can't pronounce a word even right now. So, uh, but but you read an awful lot, and a lot of it is history. Did you did you like history class back then? Oh well, yeah, I read all my life. I um, I read so much when I was a kid, I'd get a headache, and mm -hmm. and they finally said, "Well, you need glasses." Well, I never did get them, and never could afford them. 
so I just slowed down reading and uh, till I went to service, and then they furnished me reading license in the service. What do you remember about history that fr from those books back in the, I guess it would be early 40s? Yeah. What do you remember about your history book? I don't remember my, um I remember more about geography studying foreign country, foreign okay. Okay. Uh, countries than I do history. History, the best I remember, it was about uh, uh, the presidents and, and the Civil War and stuff like that. Okay. okay. Well, so when you came home, you, you did you, here at home, did you have so much time to do your homework? Did you have to do it as soon as you got home? <laughs> Whatever they wanted, you had to. First thing you had to do is change clothes. Mm -hmm. You didn't. Oh, you clothes. you didn't wear your school clothes yeah. as you got home. Yeah. We had two pair of pants or two pair of overalls or whatever you know, whatever we could afford. And when you got home, mom make you change into work clothes, mm -hmm. and then whatever to do if it's a garden or tender corn or whatever, whatever crop was in, you had to work in the crops. And then at night you had to milk and feed. Mm -hmm. And uh, So those were uh, the chores you had when you got home? Yeah, yeah that was, uh, mm -hmm. um, sometimes it wasn't, sometimes it wasn't much to do, you know. And uh, the fall was kind of easy because you, but in the summertime, we started in July. And uh, so, uh, that was garden and fruit was coming in about then. We started in school in July and ended in, in February. Which, and you had uh, dinner time was a pretty was a was a certain time every night or not? Was uh, your dinner time a certain time every night? Uh, the same time? Yeah, about sundown. About sundown. Okay. okay. I I don't. You know, whatever time sundown, but it was about sundown. And uh, normally, I, I think we eat around six. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, then a lot of the time you got out and work after. If there's something to do, you got out and work after. What about what about weekends for you when you were ten to twelve years old? Do you remember more working or do you remember more playing around the house? Um, if uh, if the crops work in, you you had to and to work in the crops and if um, it like I said in the winter time, you know there wasn't much going on, so you got to, you didn't get to play. <laughs> if you did, you hid out somewhere. So uh, Dad said that was now Sunday it was your that was the day you didn't have to do nothing. But milk and feed on Sunday. Mom wouldn't, she'd cook, but that was it. She wouldn't do nothing else but cook and make the beds and stuff like that. And she, uh, on Sunday. And you, nobody worked on Sunday, or they wouldn't let you do nothing on Sunday around there, no work, yeah. except milk and, and feed. So I understand you had your chairs, maybe they were kitchen table chairs or whatever they were. Their their legs were smaller than they were when you bought them. Yeah. Why was that? Well, I asked mom. Of course, I was always saying, crazy, but I asked her. I said, "Mom, who cut the legs off the church?" And and she said, "They wore off. The, that's the only way the kids learned to walk. Mm -hmm. So they'd push the chairs over a wood floor, and after about forty years, they wore the legs off of them." So they were the walker that kids use today. Yeah, the, the, the kids would get a hold of them, and if they wanted to go across the room, they'd push the chair. And it would just wear them down. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's what she said. She said the kids would. Well, grown people would. they get up and they'd scoot the chair back. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You've seen yeah. them do that. They'd scoot the chair back. And she said they wore out. Mm -hmm. Nobody cut them off, and that'd be short. Three or four inches. Now we've still got chairs around here that's over a hundred years old. Um, I've got one sitting in there that my grandpa bought him, and and he died in 
some around 20. And and he put a uh, hickory bottom in it, mm-hmm. bark bottom. And it's still in there. So when he says 20, he's talking 1920. 1920, yeah, not, yeah, not 2020. Yeah, no, no, yeah. um, so there's a couple of a couple of old antiques. Well, they're in, all antiques are old. A couple of antiques that uh, I wanted to ask you about. One of them you, you gave to us, and it's a white pitcher. Yes. Uh, what's the history behind that, um, as far as it, you know? It, but, I think, if I'm not wrong, of course, my memory is not what it used to be. Um, back in Osborne, Mom said Osborne gave it to her. When he was 15, 16, he worked somewhere mm-hmm. and probably bought it at for a quarter. And he bought it's a milk pitcher. Mm-hmm. It's a white pitcher. And it's a milk pitcher, they called them. So um, they'd pour the milk out of a bucket. One more milk, you put it in a bucket and put a lid on it. Well, you couldn't take the bucket to the table because there wasn't room. So mom would pour the milk in the pitcher and then set the pitcher on the table. And how old would you say that pitcher is? Uh, it's close to 100 years old. And then the clock that you have on your mantle, um, what's the story about, behind that? Because it's probably 100 years old, too. Isn't it, it? I think he, they bought that. I believe they bought that in 15. 1915. 1915. 1915. Um, when you say they, you, your mom and dad? Your mom and dad? Yes, they bought it. And dad said they ordered it from a little store down here. They got ordered it for them. And I'm, I think dad said they give $3 for it. And now that back then, that was six days worth. He got 50 cents a day. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, that, and that was 12 hours a day. Well, that, that reminds me, when you when you went to school early to start the fire, they paid you a little bit too, right? They gave me 10 cents a day to yeah. build a fire. So, so a half a dollar a week. <laughs> half a dollar a week. Was that your money, or did you have to bring that home? And I bought day? that home, and, and they bought clothes or shoes or whatever. I didn't get to spend it because I didn't get to go to the store then. Did, did other siblings have little jobs here and there that helped your mom and dad too? Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, it, when you were a kid, you had to, you didn't get to waste your money, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Uh, I know one time I found a, a nickel and I thought I'd buy me a candy bar with it. Mm-hmm. And mom said you're gonna buy your something to take to school, right. so I had to buy pencils or tablet yeah. or something with that nickel. That's so fun. And uh, <laughs> but. That was, uh, and now Roosevelt, my brother, stayed with a guy out here, and I believe he said he got 50 cents a week, and he stayed with him all week. Now, this was during when there wasn't no school, but I I believe he said he was eight or nine years old, Mm -hmm. and he left home and stayed all week, all week with him. Now, that's. And where was that at? Where did he stay? Where was that at? It's about a mile up the road. About a mile up the road. For what? Why did he stay with him? Just to, well, to the guy him? was old and okay. and he had him. To, he had to walk probably mm-hmm. uh, close to a half a mile to the mailbox. Mm-hmm. They lived a long okay. ways off the road, so he got a paper, a newspaper. Mm-hmm. The mail bring him newspaper, and he'd walk out to the mailbox and get the get okay. the paper. And if they had to carry in wood or something for the mm-hmm cook stove, and he can do that and get them water. And I, you, uh, uh, you done the best you, uh, you yeah. know, and uh, and you didn't waste that money. You, you uh, bowl clothes or something. What What do you think is the oldest possession you have in this house? Is it the clock, or is there something you know that's older than a hundred years old? Um. Now, I can't prove it, but I've got a crank churn upstairs. If I can what find. is it? A crank, crank churn? A crank churn. Yeah. You cranked it and churned. I got it when the lake came in, that people left out, and they left that in the house. So I brought it home. 
Mom said she thought it was before the Civil War. Oh, my. Wow. Okay. There's no way you can tell because right. there's no factory but, but you still have that? I still have it. Okay. And, um, and so, uh, you know, and there's probably other stuff around there. That, so, so you've got an attic, an open attic yes. that's full of history, yeah. right? Um, what do you think the most interesting article is in, in there? Any idea? Anything in, in your mind? I don't have any yeah. idea. I, I know there's a lot of dolls that, that go way back, right? Uh, lunch boxes, which go back at least 50 years. Or yeah. Better. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like 50 years is young stuff. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, do you, have you ever had... When you're almost 90, yeah. 50 years. Do, do you have... Uh, do, do you ever appraise any of that stuff to see what it might be worth today? Anything that you have? I have no idea what that. Mm -hmm. I just never did price it. I've got stuff out. Um, oh, some guys will come around more and buy it, and they'll price some things. They'll tell me what they'll give. Just like I've got a thermometer out there and advertise tongues. The little old metal thermometer. He said, I'll give you $40 for it. Now, now, just a little, as you hang on the wall. Yeah. And I, of course, I wouldn't, I done promised it to David, and I said, no, it's not for sale. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know where it come from. My mom got it someplace, and, and I told David he could have it, and and I wouldn't sell it to that guy. Then, then of course, David is, yeah. and so Lynn will get it if she wants it, and, well, I've got stuff that belonged to my mom. I know it's, it's a coach a hundred years old or over a hundred. So, uh, now dad, my dad sold all that. He had tools and uh, stuff like that, and mm -hmm. he sold it. And yeah. when he quit, when he quit work, and when he started on Social Security, he quit. And, mm -hmm. and so, uh, and. Uh, the, the leadership center down here, the 4-H leadership center, yeah. the building, uh, which is just about a quarter of a mile down the road. Yeah. Uh, when was that built? About? Um, the 4-H, it's a 4-H, and the leadership didn't come in. The university didn't come in until around the 80, some 80 or 81. It was in the early 80s when they came. But the 4-H started they started buying up land back in 62, I think, 62 or 63. And then they, they started kids uh, in the late 60s, bringing the school kids in after they got some cabins built. So so those are your only neighbors to that side if they're there. But has that been a good thing for you and your property or has it been a nuisance? It never bothered me a bit. And I, um, uh, some of the people didn't like them, but uh, you got people that don't like change. You know, they don't like nothing that's different. But now, mom and dad loved them. They, dad is down there all the time, and, and that you know, they come around to mom and help her. They, they didn't think nothing about it. They liked the people down there. So even even today, with a nice paved road, and they keep it up really well because of that, probably. Um, but even today, when there's nobody down there, maybe during the week, it's rare for you to see what more than five or six vehicles a, day. <laughs> a, a whole day <laughs> yes. in, in your front yard, right? And yeah. if if school is not if the kids are not down there, it's real rare to see over four or five a day. Yeah, and then. Uh, I've got pictures and videos of, of your property in the front lawn, but you were telling me when you grew up as a kid, it didn't look anything like that. Explain kind of how your front yard was. Yeah, back. We had about uh, 15 feet of yard around the house. 15 feet. About 15 feet. Yeah. And it was wore out of grass. There wasn't no grass on it or anything. Um, I'd say... Out there was the apple orchard and the garden, and about 15 feet, you can see about that. Mm -hmm. And the back was, too, the chicken lot, and, mm -hmm. and uh, where we kept the chickens and everything was out back. And uh, probably had, 
uh, probably a hundred or a hundred and fifty chicken. And a lot of the time we we lived off of the price of the eggs. You didn't they they me to the store with the dozen of eggs to get what they needed to cook with. And you didn't buy much. You bought sugar and baking powders and soda and stuff like that. But you didn't buy canned stuff. And, yeah. And, uh, did you always have a dog in the family? Oh, I always had a dog, I reckon, all my life. Hmm. Uh, when I was a kid, I claimed them. But then uh, when I got big enough, I got my own dog. Yeah. So back then... Uh, uh, there were probably just a lot of dogs that roamed around, right? Yeah. And, and they would end up here at your house, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, um, most of the people that had dogs kept them home. And if the dog, if there's a lot of dogs in the country, somebody shot them. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't see many dogs running around. Yeah. Um, Did people keep dogs in the houses back then at no, all? No. No. They didn't even want them on the porch most of the time. Um, Dad would let one sleep on the porch of the winter time, and and no cat in the house. He didn't have a cat in the house, and uh, plenty of flies because there were no screen doors in it. But uh, so that that nice paved road out there right now, when you were ten years old, what kind of road did you have? It was. That was sand out there. About, sand. I'd say the sand was six or eight inches deep. It's just like a beach. Mm -hmm. It was sand, pure sand. Are you talking the road? Yeah, it washed off of the banks and yeah. make. Um, it, we had sandy clay here. Yeah. And when it rained, it washed the sand down. Mm -hmm. Well, the dirt would stay where it's at, but it would move the sand, mm -hmm. just like in a beach. Yeah. And if a truck or something stopped down there, most time they stuck, mm -hmm. so you couldn't go no place. Yeah. Uh, and they, was that was that pretty well all the way up to Nancy? No, and, it's just right here. Just right and the here. rest of it is mud. Mud, okay. That's going to be worse. Yeah. And uh, I remember when we got a uh, road, it got, come through in 50 or 51 mm -hmm. through here. They brought the county builders a road. They brought the, a bulldozer and a grader over, and we thought that was the greatest thing in ever and they graveled it with creek gravel. About the time you were leaving home. Yeah. About the time you were leaving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And didn't have anything run on it but a road wagon and a pair of mules. But, yeah. uh, and I, uh, I remember you telling me, too, that uh, just about every holiday weekend, or if there was a weekend that you had time, you would pack your wife and David and Lynn, and they would you would make the trip. After midnight or around midnight or so, wouldn't you down here? Yeah. Oftentimes? Yeah. Because you worked the night shift? I worked the night shift and I'd leave up at midnight. Mm -hmm. When I got off at 11, 11 30, and the time I got home and cleaned up, we'd leave. Mm -hmm. And we'd get in here about daylight. Mom would just be getting up. Sometimes she'd have breakfast when we got here, but most time yeah. she would, she'd just be getting up. And I have got down here before she got out of bed. And, but uh, that happened all the time, and that's when we traveled the night, and never was stranded out of 30 years. I never was stranded on the road. And, uh, not much in the way of interstates either, right? Two-lane road for the most part? Two-lane road for the most part? Yeah. Yeah, two lanes. Yeah. And, uh, at, uh, but that was, and they'd take, of a night when we come in, we could make it pretty fast. And uh, five or five hours or something like that. And if I by myself, I could make it a little quicker. But going back on this holiday weekend, it takes eight hours to get there. Yeah. You, you said that once you retired, you knew you were going to come back home. You couldn't I knew, wait to come back I home. Knew but that was, but why, why is this place so special to you? Why is this home, this area so special to you? I, I have no. Yeah. I just. Um, all the, when I left, it was in my mind to come back. Mm -hmm. So uh, Because a lot of people, when they leave, they don't want they, to. You mentioned Roxy went to Texas. They were, she was probably ready to leave, right? But, yeah, ready. Yeah. Um, well, uh, most of us, when we left, believe it or not, would try to come back every weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, 
um, Happy Chandler, our governor, I'll have to, okay. <laughs> you read of Happy. I know of Happy Chandler, yeah. And uh, he said he never met a guy <clears throat> from Kentucky that was thinking about going back home yeah. or going back home. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> he never he never met a man, okay. You know, I just, yeah. he's either thinking about it or, mm-hmm. or he was done going back. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that was right. Uh, and that was us. We come in every weekend. In the pictures, people are sure on the weekend. And holidays, everybody come in on the holidays. Yeah. Uh, the little church up here, it wasn't nothing on a holiday weekend or on a Sunday to have 75 or 80 people in. Uh, you know, uh, but then uh, the other times, they might have been 15 or 20. So no matter where you lived in your 87 years, this is always home for you. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, most of us, uh, now some of us didn't come back. I mean, some didn't come back, but mm-hmm. most of the people did. And then one year, it was all over yeah. Kentucky and Tennessee. Tennessee is just as bad as we were. Right. Okay. And, you know. So we, so we covered a lot of things. In your 87 years, I'm sure not everything, but is there anything you can think of right now that we, that we haven't talked about that you and, think would be interesting? Or and and well, I hadn't thought about it many times. Yeah. but uh, I'm sure there are a lot of things. But, you, uh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, you probably are, but yeah. uh, but that's um um I guess um uh, my life of growing up. Uh, I've thought about it a lot. We live rough, and we didn't have nothing, but everybody in the country was the same way. Right, right. It was during the Depression, mm-hmm. and and uh, if you could get a quarter a day to work, the most of the guys worked for a quarter a day. And then, of course, they, during the war, the thing got better. By the time I come along, it was picking up a little bit up to... 50 cents a day and did you ever see any despair from your mom and dad through those days that it was just so hard with so many children to be able to feed that many children did did you see them down and and in despair at all and uh, never did yeah they you know and here's something you said sit around and people complain about the weather you know, yeah, and I try not to, but uh, but I never did hear them say a word about. It. Mm-hmm. Never did. Yeah. And sometimes they'd say, "Well, if it don't rain, don't know what we're going to do this fall." Mm-hmm. Then, because, it, then it would know, rain. Yeah, but that's right. all I'd say. Yeah. Okay. And uh, right. that um, was uh, we lived hard, and and they done the best they could. Mm-hmm. We uh, we didn't have nothing. They wasn't educated. Mom went to the I think she went to the fifth grade, and Dad went to the fourth or fifth, something like that. And and uh, but uh, and my mom used something that uh, they wouldn't have today. They had a church house out, a schoolhouse out here, a church house here, which you have on your own calling, and. Uh, uh, I know where it was located, and there's no cemetery out there. You pass it when you walk. There was a church house this side. Of it. Mm-hmm. They had school in there every day. And then on Sunday, they had church. Mm-hmm. That was the only thing they had. And and if it was real pretty, on up the road, they had the campground. They, it was just a clear, cleared off space in the wood, and they cut logs for seats. Mm-hmm. And that's where you went to church. One thing we didn't talk about, Morrill Chapel, right? The cemetery there. Uh, basically, you've been tasked with taking care of it for many years, right? Yeah. How did that start? The church? That you were the one that took care of it. Uh, the grounds and when I maintained. moved back in 89 or 90, um, the guy taking care of it, his wife died, okay. and uh, he started, and uh, it's, um, 
uh, oh, he, uh, he started, uh, cleaning it up, mm-hmm. you know, and, and asking for donations to help. So, he, in a year, he got disabled. Okay. And he asked me, would I take over? Okay. So I took over. And How old is that church? How old is that moral chapel? In 1912. 1912. Yeah. <laughs> they had a uh, 100-year anniversary. Uh, well, it, was, it looks like it's in good shape. Uh, well, it, we've rebuilt it. Yeah, have you, that's uh, what I was going to ask if you've rebuilt yeah. a lot of it. Okay. All right. And uh, we put a new roof on. And, uh, when I was going to church, of course, it's got electrician air conditioning and the furnace and everything, and bathrooms and everything and now. But when I was going, they had a stove sitting in the middle of the church house in the aisle. They was in the aisle, and about the middle of the church house, and there was a stove sitting there. So when they had church, if it was cold, they built a fire. Everybody sat around the, the stove as close as you could get. And that was... Uh, so, so those of you who are watching that, when you're watching this, when Milburn is long gone, that's where he'll be laid. Yeah, that's right? where I, that's, that's where, where his I... his family has been. But uh, a moral chapel down here, and uh, uh, it's, it's it's just uh, been in your family your whole life, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Uh, mm-hmm. The the rock is done out there. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Stones out there for you. David's uh, there. Alma's there, is that right? Your mom, mm-hmm. dad? Well, mom. Yeah. So, and so they're all there. Yeah. Both ashes, both be there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, there's uh, Auburn's there, mm-hmm. Cosby's there. Yeah. And Roxy was cremated, so she wasn't there. And Dorothy was buried with her kids mm-hmm. over Broadhead. So. Okay. And Bob was born, uh, buried in Cincinnati. Well, we know there's a lot more to his life in 87 years, but I think we covered a lot. So if you're his child, grandchild, great-grandchild, and uh, future grandchildren, uh, I, I hope you learned a little something from uh, uh, your, your uh, Milburn Decker. If, if you'd asked me some of the stuff when I had a good memory, I can't remember now. Well, they all know if they're watching this that at 87 years of age, that you can remember back. 85 of those years. That's yeah. pretty good. And far as I can remember back is um, uh, uh, two years ago. Yeah, 85 that's years a, ago. That, that's, two, that's as far back as I can remember. Yeah. And uh, what, what do you remember when you were two? It got my finger on Oh, that's so. right. We talked about that. <laughs> yeah, we talked about that. That's, far that's back hard to forget. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, uh, I've had my toe cut off and a finger cut off. And, yeah, so, and, so so you look great, you feel great, but it hasn't always been all that great, has it? As far as your health, <laughs> you've, had, you've had a lot of health issues. Oh, I've years. had a lot of problems, and the Lord brought me through every one of them, and, mm-hmm. and I give him a credit. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks again. <laughs> Part three might be coming up if we think yeah. of other questions, but... That's, um, but you got about two and a half hours of Milburn Decker there in 87 years. So, for 87 years and two and a half hours. And, so, enjoy it. He, he might get a notion to go for another two. I do part three, so stay tuned. <laughs>
Thank you.